There are only few precedents in Georgia when collectors establish a museum on their own, at their own expense, to create a new hub in the country. Building on the private collection of Gyrgyz Tabaridze and Manana Shevardnadze, the Georgian Museum of Fine Arts is one such rare exception. This husband and wife team of art aficionados started collecting examples of contemporary Georgian painting in the 1990s. The idea of founding a museum was conceived pretty much instantaneously, though turning it into reality only became possible in 2018. At present, the museum's rich collection, comprising a repository and exhibition halls, incorporates over 3,500 works and encompasses over a hundred years in the development of Georgian fine arts since the 1910s. The collection brings together about a hundred artists of different trademark styles. Sculptures, oil and graphic works, and painting objects tell the story of the development of Georgian fine arts in the 20th and 21st centuries. Clearly demonstrating how Georgian painting has worked towards keeping traditions and individualism while also striving for change and synchronization with the modern world. Over the past five years, the museum has transformed into an integrated cultural space where, besides exhibitions of fine art pieces, book presentations, painting masterclasses, meetings with artists and writers are held, where classical music and poetry are performed, photo exhibitions are organized, and so are music at the museum, experimental gatherings, combining various art forms. Alongside permanent exhibitions, the museum also pursues lively gallery activities, and has hosted more than one exciting artist, celebrated and rookie alike. As time goes by, modernity poses new demands and standards for the field of art. Consistent in keeping pace with the times, the Georgian Museum of Fine Arts now opens its doors to an approach that is unconventional for exhibition spaces. To celebrate its fifth anniversary, the museum offers an unusual exhibition for the Georgian scene. Designating its halls for street art, the most unruly contemporary branch, Vandalism or art? This question is no longer relevant when it comes to street art that sprang up in the Western world in the 1960s. And it all started with graffiti. Graffiti served the lower social strata as a way of defying and protesting against all types of elitist or cultural norms, with a thirst for self-expression, the sweetness of a forbidden fruit, and adrenaline, enticing representatives of this subculture to leave their signatures or critical inscriptions wherever it was prohibited by law. In train cars, underpasses, subway entrances and building facades. In the late 1990s, graffiti appeared in Tbilisi as well. As the most democratic creative form, street art easily took root in Georgia. Tbilisi and other big cities feature both colorful murals covering entire walls and inscriptions or images using graffiti or stencil techniques. Street art primarily focuses on reflecting our reality, providing social commentary on our everyday lives and stinging political messaging. The Georgian Museum of Fine Arts enables young Georgian street artists to 
transfer their work from the streets into exhibition spaces and to have a taste of the previously unfamiliar, a brand new context. We have an opportunity to chat with Georgian artists Mishiko Sulukauri and Gagosha, who along with other local creatives, painted this section of the exhibition space. Hello, I'm really excited to be speaking to you. First off, what does street art mean to you? For us, street art is more than just a way to self-express. It's our everyday life, what we live and breathe. In essence, street art is about the underground and self-expression. If you object to something, you just go and protest, without consulting anyone. There's a lot of legal street art in Georgia, watered down and devoid of socio-political issues because it's censored, and that's unacceptable to street art, in my opinion. As for entering gallery spaces, it's no longer street art as such. It's a different form, though street artists do it quite often. In street art, and arts in general, it's very important for artists to be authentic. You should be able to identify the author as soon as you look at a work. Speaking of authenticity, who is the most authentic figure, the biggest name in street art? The biggest name in street art must be Banksy. He gave a direction to everything once started by big artists in the streets, so it's definitely Banksy. To mark its fifth anniversary, the Georgian Museum of Fine Arts has prepared an exceptional, exciting, magnificent gift for its guests. Today, it showcases Banksy, the most formidable figure in global street art. Banksy started out in the 1990s, first working as a freehand graffiti artist, soon moving on to using stencils and gradually emerging as one of the most popular artists in the world. This anonymous creative hidden from public view has transformed into a brand new phenomenon in the art world. With easily identifiable and readable images, art objects and installations suffused with humour, sarcasm and self-irony and unpredictable stunt practices, Banksy has created a new, previously unknown, visual language. Banksy is the first to bring street art, uninhibited, uncompromising towards all kinds of norms, from the democratic space of streets into museums even making the genre attractive to the galleries and exhibition spaces. Banksy has changed the attitudes of gallerists, auction houses and collectors towards the underground. Street art has become expensive and posh. The team of the Georgian Museum of Fine Arts, under its young leaders, Irakli Joktabaridze, and Tamuna Mosashvili started preparing for the exhibition months in advance. The works by Georgian artists temporarily relocated from the 11 halls, occupying three floors, into the museum's repository, while the exhibition space transformed top to bottom, with the walls painted black and a special lighting system installed. Just for the exhibition, 10 Banksy originals arrived from the private collection of British aristocrat Lord Edward Spencer Churchill. Expensive world street art pieces were arranged in the museum's halls under the supervision of installers commissioned from the UK just for this purpose. The exhibition's curator, British photographer, collector, editor and gallerist Steve Lazarides delivered about 80 prints and 400 photos of Banksy's works and installed them in the exhibition halls with the help of the museum's team. Steve Lazarides is quite familiar with Georgian urban art, having spent a lot of time learning more about it and interacting with local street artists. 
who eventually painted the walls of one of the exposition spaces. This is how works by Georgian artists Gagosha, Lam, Koska, Semichka, and Sick and Tired found themselves next to Banksy's originals under the curatorship of gallerist Elena Kapanadze. The temporary exhibition hall on the first floor was also painted by Georgian street artists. A shop was set up in one of the exhibition spaces, with postcards, posters, t-shirts and tote bags made by the museum's team for sale, as well as prints hand-painted by the exhibition's curator, Steve Lazaridis, and copies of his book, Banksy Captured. Steve Lazaridis, a major contributor to the promotion of street art across the globe, has been actively involved in the British underground scene since the 1980s, while 1997 marked the beginning of his lively cooperation with Banksy that lasted some 11 years. Quite plausibly, Steve is the person we owe whatever little is known about this mysterious anonymous artist. Steve Lazaridis has published a two-volume book, Banksy Captured, which brings together his pictures depicting Banksy at work and exclusive exhibition photos, with most of them on display at the museum. Visitors are welcome to enjoy these originals, but now let's have a few words with Steve Lazaridis in person. Hello, Steve. Nice welcome. to have you from Georgia. Thank you very much. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I love it. So let's start from the beginning. How did you meet Banksy? Can you recall? Uh, I can, like my memory's not great, but for things like that, it's, I got commissioned to take his photo. I worked for a Star magazine in the, in the mid 90s. And because I'd already, we both came from Bristol. I was involved in the graffiti scene before him by about a decade. So I knew all the players. So I managed to get the kind of, I managed to get the right ticket to get an invite to go and see him. So we liked each other, got to take the portrait, and then it kind of spiraled from there. And it went suddenly from us being like two daft kids from Bristol, just mm -hmm. kind of, you know, making some prints, doing some paintings, to running, me running a multi million band company and him being a global superstar. So he did better than I did. So yeah. now everyone knows his name, but we don't know anything about his personality. No, and like, I'm no, no, I won't give it away either uh. because it's <laughs> like, one is like it's a part of the game right? yeah but it also it's like it's like telling somebody is like telling a five-year-old child that santa claus doesn't exist it's like you don't want to be that person anymore i think before people might have wanted to have released his name whereas i think now it's like you'd get hung from a lamppost plus like no one's going to believe it we put so much false information out like you you know you believe in what you read because like we certainly we, we've moved it this way that way this way <laughs> over the years to the fact where it's difficult to prove that it's, it is or it isn't him. But, you know, there's a crew of people that know who he is, but no one really gives anything up. Needles to say, you didn't have uh, enough time to explore, explore Georgian street art, but you had the opportunity to work with them, a couple of them. It, 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 the this is, yeah, it's been really good fun. It's, mm -hmm. uh, what happened was I've been there, I'd come a couple of times already to come and see yeah. the museum. And then, uh, like, so at some point, it was discussed about bringing, like, Georgian street mm -hmm. art into the show. And it was just trying to work out, like, how do you bring it in and make it so that it's, it, it looks like it should be there? Mm -hmm. So I totally forgot that the Banksy's graffiti area um, canvas was coming. And this was something essential. You just get like slammed out on the street, and then people amazingly would believe it. And then the next thing you know, the whole wall is just full a with, with, of seconds, with graffiti. Right? Yeah. But for me, it's like I'm I'm bored of the graffiti that it's coming to me nowadays and what I see. Mm -hmm. And it's you know it's coming out of a society that's now safe enough. It seems that people don't want to say anything. Whereas what I like about the Georgian street art, I mean, this is not just this, but the stuff I see on the street, mm -hmm. the, you, you know, there's very few like meaningless tags here. It's like everybody's writing something. People want to say something. And it goes back to the kind of true ethos of graffiti where it's, you, 
going out to get a political message out or say something that you can't say somewhere else. And that's really exciting for me. You know, I think my favourites really, not the ones you'll have favourites, but it's like with the children, I have a favourite one. <laughs> um, it's like sick and tired. It's, it for me, is like, it makes me smile. It's like, it's my favourite form of graffiti, just that fat, wide, drippy, white letters. Just, you know, it's hooligan graffiti. It's like sometimes, sometimes I just like it and someone just goes out and gets a bit naughty and just does something that's, that, it, 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 that makes you smile. Scores of guests visited the Georgian Museum of Fine Arts on the opening day of the exhibition. These included contemporary Georgian creatives, street artists, gallerists, collectors or just fine arts buffs. Good evening. Thank you for being with us and sharing our joy. Five years have gone by unbelievably fast since the museum's inauguration and also two or so years of the pandemic threw us from life as usual into virtual reality. Over a hundred thousand guests have visited the museum so far. The museum has expanded to emerge as a cultural hub in the heart of Tbilisi. Overall, we've been working toward the Georgian cause. But now, with this exhibition, we're expanding our international horizons by bringing over artists from abroad. Thank you so much. And I believe you'll enjoy the exhibition on the third floor. Guests were pleasantly surprised by the unique opportunity to meet up close and personal the originals of Banksy's universally acclaimed works, notably his sculptures, canvases and art objects. Also documentary photo materials from his stunts or shows, with most of them being showcased for the first time. Steve Lazaridis' photos portray the invisible side of Banksy's creative life and offer us a glimpse of the complex and controversial path that has transformed a young street artist from Bristol into a modern icon. The originals, owned by Lord Edward Spencer Churchill, Duke of Marlborough, make up one of the largest Banksy collections in the world. So what do you think about bringing street art from the democratic open space to museum and galleries? Well, I think, I mean, I think that, you know, Banksy's work was always intended to be not just street art, but he designed and took photographs and took prints of his work. Um, and I think that's very much how he funded himself. Banksy's obviously done museum shows before. Mm. Banksy's actually infiltrated uh, the Tate and various other um, museums and, and install, self-installed his art in those museums and I think that that's, that's quite a humorous thing and he was the first artist to have done that. And uh, what do you think about uh, Georgian Museum of Fine Arts and about this exhibition? Well, I mean, Gia has, uh, the, the museum is obviously an extraordinary thing. It's an extraordinary thing for, for the Jokhtaburitse family to have, have, have done for, for Georgia and I think it showcases the very best of Georgian fine art and I think this exhibition is particularly interesting because I think the opportunity to inspire uh, Georgian street artists and graffiti artists um, you know, is, will be hopefully great and certainly what I've seen of the Georgian street artists um, have been, you know, is very good. I mean I think you've got some really exceptional talents in Georgia and I think if there's an opportunity for those people to gain greater recognition and get more inspired, then that's always a good thing. 
Uh, what is your attitude towards this work? Winston, yeah. with a new haircut. <laughs> Look, I think this is a good example of um, Banksy's work where he takes a very serious image and he introduces a bit of humor. I don't know if you know the history of this, but there's a large statue of Winston Churchill yeah, yeah, yeah. in Parliament Square and someone as a joke put a Mohican on, on, on Winston, so I think Banksy was inspired by that. Some people might say it's disrespectful. I, I look at it differently, which is, which is, you know, Winston was a hugely important and significant historical figure. If, if someone wants to bring a little bit of humor to that story, what's wrong with that? Undoubtedly, Banksy's exhibition is a milestone event in Georgia's cultural life one that has already put Tbilisi on the map of contemporary global art. Created with love for art and selfless dedication, the Georgian Museum of Fine Arts is a genuine cultural hub serving the country, a place where exciting innovations await everyone who loves, appreciates and needs art.